Well, this is fuck awful. This is Soul Seraph, although it should change its name to uh Very Bad Game. <laughs> that lampooned it. Ha! <laughs> so this is Soul Seraph. Sega published it. I don't know what possessed them. I don't know why they thought this would be a good idea. Sega's been doing quite a few good things lately, so I sort of trusted that they'd have my best interests in mind as a customer. You, you shouldn't ever believe that of a publisher. I'm being a little bit facetious, but, you know, Sega ain't been doing too bad these past few years, so I thought, right, Soul Seraph, spiritual successor to Act Razor, which was and is quite a unique game. Uh, I was quite excited for it, and then I played it, and it's awful. Act Razor, in case you didn't know, was on the SNES, if I recall correctly. It was an interesting mix between a, an action platformer and a sort of town management game, where you were a god, and you'd look after all these little people, these little idiots, and sometimes you'd go down and fight. You know, get your own hands, your own uh, celestial hands dirty. And I want to say that the... The bare basic spirit of that is evident in Soul Seraph, but even that would be overblowing exactly what this game actually does. It took that idea of a, a town management action platformer hybrid, and rather than give us that, it is instead a very, very shit action platformer bolted onto the arse end of a very, very shit tower defense game. Both elements are dreadful, subpar at the very best, and this game is never at its very best. It's hideous, absolutely ugly. This thing cost $15. $14.99 of my hard-earned American dollars. Thank you very much. It looks like it should be on mobiles for like a buck. If that. Hideous to look at. Controls awfully. I mean, it's stodgy, it's unresponsive. The side-scrolling action platforming bollocks is a misery. It's a misery to play. Unresponsive, as I say, laggy in the controls. You often feel like you cannot control Helios, the main character, adequately enough to deal with the enemies that will just jump on, like, from off screen and ambush you and fling little uh, fucking projectiles at you. Not a moment of this is fun. Not a single moment of this. The action platforming is unbearable. Unbearable. Feels physically uncomfortable to play, just with how stodgy it is. The tower defense stuff is marginally better, but if you're doing better than shit, you're not doing particularly well. I mean, that's not an absolute term. You could be brilliant and you're still technically doing better than shit, but I, I mean it's doing just better just about better than pissing rotten it's boring that's that soul seraph at its absolute best is this what you're looking at right now this bare bones tower defense crap it's just a, a rotation of resources piss some rain on the ground to make a farm the farm lets you feed people, so then you make houses. The houses let you station various barracks and towers and, and little uh, uh, resource gathering areas like lumber mills. And then enemies come through in waves like a tower defense game along their little roads. And that's it. That's it, my friend. As you go through, you unlock more traps and buildings and stuff. But what you're looking at right here is exactly as fun as Soul Seraph gets. This. Just doing this. I re I replayed from the beginning to get some usable footage because some of the later action platforming is dreadful. Dreadful. Like, like almost unplayably bad. And I couldn't get any half-decent footage. Look at this. 15 bucks! 15 bucks! Ace Team, you can do better than this. Is Ace Team the team I'm thinking of? I'm going to Google it right now. This isn't particularly professional to do this in the middle of. But it's not like it matters. It's not like it's not like I need to go all out on the... I was right! Ace Team did Xenoclash and Rock of Ages. I liked Xenoclash. Do you remember Xenoclash? That was 2009. 
I played a bit of the sequel. I didn't enjoy it as much, but I might not have given it a fair shake at the time. I might have been too busy. I might have to go back. I've said I might a lot, um, but I may. There we are. Change up the words. I may have to go back and try Xenoclash 2 again, but I did like... Xenoclash was a bit pants, but it was a bit pants in that way that, you know, I like a game like The Sinking City in that it might be pants, but it's very charming and weird and quirky. And I kind of found I found a lot to be charmed by. Weird game. Amazing premise for the sort of quasi-antagonistic force in the game. The Corvid of the Free, I think the enemies were called. Uh, they chose to be different. They all wanted to be very different. Uh, and in doing so, chose to just ignore the concept of sanity, which let them do whatever they want. Uh, I remember there was one Corvid that decided it just wanted to never stop moving so it just walked in a straight line and never stopped there was another one that wanted to be invisible but obviously physically couldn't be invisible so I thought if it just ripped the eyes out of everything else in the world then it could be invisible a really great back set of backstory for that and the, the game was a like a first person melee combat based game it was very awkward to play but unique and, and fun in its own strange, almost broken way. Uh, and the main antagonist was called Father Mother, which was your father and your mother at the same time. And it would talk like this all the time. <laughs> the Corwids are not slaves of reality, so they can be insane. Oxometer just walks in a straight line without letting anything change his path. And that's what Oxometer does. Armenia peed on herself and starved to death anonymously. Cabell ate people, and that's just what he had to do. Pelham needed to be invisible, so he removed the eyes from anything that could see him. But why would he do that? Why not? Oh, that went very, very badly for me. That went very badly. Do, remind me to never do that voice again. I used to do that voice. I used to be good at doing the father-mother voice from Xenoclash, but I almost died. I almost died just now. Anyway, Soul Seraph, that's the point of this video, isn't it? Let's get back to the actual game, although I, don't, I really don't want to. I'm annoyed that I wasted my discussion of um, Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives on the Sea of Solitude video because I could really do with an opportunity to talk about anything that isn't Soul Seraph. Anyway, Soul Seraph is embarrassing. Embarrassing! And this is coming from someone who just choked themselves out trying to do a silly voice. That's how bad this is. I just don't know what possessed them. I don't know what made anyone think this was a good thing to do. That this wasn't a shameful thing to do. I remember this getting, you know, quite a few news headlines and stuff. When it came out, like a few days before it came out, I saw all the game blogs, all the sites, all the Twitter, social media being all, Oh, hey guys, come on. Spiritual successor to Actraiser. How amazing is that? And it turned my head. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll try that out. I need a new game. It's a bit of a dry period for video games right now. Uh, the, the famous summer drought kicking in. Why not? Why not? I know why not now. I wish I hadn't spent... I wasn't even going to bother doing a video on this. I deleted it. I deleted it. I... I, uh, re I was replaying Dragon's Dogma. That's... Yeah, Dragon's Dogma last night. On the Switch. I thought, I, I need another piss about game to just play portably when I'm bored. Uh, and I deleted this to make room for it. I didn't actually need to make that kind of room for it. Um, I didn't need to make any room for it, but it was a good reason to just get Soul Seraph off my system. But I woke up this morning and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to completely waste 15, 15 dollars of my bloody money on a game I'm not even going to get any coverage out of. I forgot to even mention it on my podcast. I did the Podquisition podcast where we talk about what games we played this week. And I, I said I'd played no games. I said I've played no games this week. That's what I thought of this. I couldn't even struggle to remember I'd played it until I saw it on my Switch dashboard last night and deleted it. And then I re-downloaded it this morning to get this footage because I was like, no. No. 
Not in my name, Soul Seraph. I don't even know what I mean by that. This is an embarrassment. An absolute... Ace Team should be ashamed of themselves for making it. Sega should be ashamed of themselves for putting it out. Some games you should just not release. Try, try thinking of that next time, video games. When you've got a Soul Seraph on your hands, try thinking, you know what? We could just not. We could just not bother. The world would not have blamed you for it. I would not have wept for it. So fucking Sarah. If you want to play a tower defense game, just play almost any other tower defense game. If you want to play an action platformer, play Bloodstained. It came out not that long ago. It's brilliant. And if you've already played it, play it again over Soul Seraph. Play anything again over Soul Seraph. Play Anthem over Soul Seraph. Anthem. You will be less bored. Very bad game. Should have been a dollar. Don't bother with it.